What really put E3D on the map was their purpose-built 3D printer hotends. These were designed for 3D printing's needs and not repurposed from other hardware components. Now, there are multiple variations on the sixth version of their hotend, the E3D V6, each intended for increasingly higher flow rates to really get filament flowing. Almost every hotend is 1.75mm or 2.85mm filament compatible and is offered in both direct drive and Bowden configurations. Let's jump into it. If you need to have dual extrusion functionality, you have two options. Design or download a mounting system that utilizes any of E3D's single extruder options, like two Titan arrows side by side, just like the Lulzbot Taz Pro's tool head, or you can use some system like the E3D Tool Changer to change out the print head to one loaded with a different material or color. Otherwise, there aren't any hotends designed specifically for dual extrusion, and instead you will just have a print head with two hotends on it. E3D hotends are air-cooled. They use a small fan to push cool air past a heat sink to keep the temperatures low and prevent heat from creeping away from the heater block. When a hotend is installed in an enclosure, to keep temperatures around the printed part high and avoid any material complications, you prevent any cool air from being blown on the heat sink and instead only have hot air to move around it. This is problematic for certain materials and can cause a jam as heat creeps up past the heat break and into the heat sink with nothing to cool it down. E3D has a liquid cooled option, the Titan Aqua, an extruder hot end combo that uses a redesigned heat sink to circulate a liquid coolant from a pump located outside the enclosure where it is continually cooled. We'll get into the details of the Titan Aqua in another video. More often than not, an E3D hot end's maximum temperature is determined by its temperature sensor, not its construction. The standard cartridge thermistor included in each hot end kit has a maximum working temperature of 300 degrees Celsius, and if exceeded, begins to rapidly become unreliable or even fails altogether. In this case, a PT100 or thermocouple replacement can allow you to reach up to 500 degrees Celsius if the hot end's materials themselves don't melt. Generally, a plated copper heater block for the V6, Volcano, or Super Volcano is the extent of any hardware changes needed to reach such a high temperature. However, the Light 6 has a maximum temperature of 240 degrees Celsius as it is a PTFE lined hot end, and PTFE noxiously degrades at temperatures higher than that, and no hardware changes can be made to affect that other than getting a new hot end altogether. In order to extrude more filament without overworking the extruder motor, you need to lengthen the melt zone of the hot end. In the case of E3D, that means making the heater block taller to give the filament more time to heat up and leave the nozzle at the necessary temperature. The E3D Volcano was the first introduction to higher flow rates, with the heater block almost double the length of the original V6. As you might expect, the Super Volcano is two and a half times as long as the Volcano and five times as long as an E3D V6 and can extrude filament out of a 1.4 millimeter nozzle in one millimeter layers, laying an absurd amount of filament and turning a spool faster than you've ever seen. E3D hot ends are incredibly modular, which means that any point in time, you can swap out every component for a new replacement with more capabilities or just for general maintenance. Try a gold anodized heatsink for some extra flare or a titanium heat break for supreme thermal control. There are even kits available to upgrade from a V6 heater block to a volcano or super volcano without having to change anything other than the heater block and nozzle, and fan ducts to keep the layer cooling fan of your printer aimed at your parts and not the longer block. At this point in time, 2.85 millimeter filament is finding less and less options available for mods and upgrades, yet E3D continues to support with many 2.85 millimeter components. There are only three parts per hot end necessary to print with a specific filament diameter the heat sink, the heat break, and the nozzle. Among E3D's offerings, the V6, Volcano, and Super Volcano support 2.85 millimeter filament or 1.75 millimeter filament, depending on the aforementioned components. Depending on the nature of your 3D prints, it can be advantageous to have your hot end mounted directly to your extruder, which is referred to as direct drive, for better filament control at the cost of increased mass on the print head. Alternatively, sacrificing a little control and needing more retraction, you can move the extruder to the frame and have a long PTFE tube connecting the extruder to your hot end. This technique is called Bowden, and you can do this to lower the moving mass of the print head. The heatsink used for the E3D V6, Volcano, and Super Volcano is suited for direct drive or Bowden as long as you're working with the right version. The 1.75mm heatsink is used for both direct or Bowden configurations, but the 2.85 heatsink has two versions, one specifically for direct drive and one for Bowden, not both so you'll need to choose wisely prior to ordering. When it comes to hot ends, there are many different ways you can mount one to your print head in a reliably stiff way. For the most part, E3D utilizes a groove mount setup where the heatsink slides into a mount, printed or otherwise, that cradles the top of the heatsink in place. 
A slight modification of the V6 heatsinks exists in the form of the threaded heatsink that can be inserted through the mount with a nut that clamps down from above, giving a much more secure fit than the groove mount option. You'll want to note though that the threaded heatsink is only available for 1.75mm filament and can only be used for Bowden configurations, as most extruders rely on the groove mount geometry to mount a hot end to them. E3D is virtually synonymous with 3D printer hot ends thanks to their wide offerings and regular updates to the platform. From simple and reliable to complex and capable, every E3D hot end excels at the tasks they were designed for, whether or not it's just PLA printing or needed for engineering grade peak. Hopefully you have a much better understanding of the differences between each E3D hot end and have the information that you need to choose the right one for you. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the Matter Hackers YouTube channel and find us at Matter Hackers on all your favorite social media platforms. To learn more and to order your E3D hot end today, go to matterhackers.com.